Hey Visionaries, it's A back on your screen with another one. As you can tell from the title, today we'll be discussing a few things I wish somebody told me when I was initially diagnosed. I'm over here, 14 years in the game, and if you don't know what I'm saying, back in 2010, I was diagnosed with Stark's disease. I will include a video over here if you want a breakdown of what that is. But ever since then, I've been learning a lot about life legally blind, and I wanna share some of those things with you in case you're initially diagnosed or been living with it for a few years like I have. So whether you have an eye disease or you know somebody with an eye disease or you just happen to stumble on me and you have no idea what a degenerative eye disease is, something I will say will help you in an authentic way. On that note, if you want more videos and podcasts, you can head over to Patreon where I share a personal take on a lot of things. If the economy is economying for you, I also do a free podcast every week wherever you listen to your music and your pods. You can check it out, Authentic with Alicia. So with all of that out of the way, let's get into the five things I wanna share today that I wish someone said to me because honestly, the amount of time and you know, peace of mind I would have saved had I known these things, but here we are now. I hope this helps you and saves you feeling like you're gaslighting yourself. So should we just go through the list? or I talk about them as I do it. You know what, I like the whole side banner thing, so cue the list. First, we're gonna talk about the process. Then we'll talk about how it's a layer on top of everything. I've alluded to that in other videos, but we'll get more into it today. Then we'll talk about how your family gets diagnosed when you do, because that's the truth. And then we'll do a little bit about the dark side, because hello, I see things differently now in more ways than one. And let's see how many blind puns I can put in this one video. And lastly, and most importantly, advocacy. So let's go through this. The first thing is the process because it is a constant process. And if someone had just told me, not only are you gonna lose vision, but you're gonna lose your damn mind over time, you know how much that would have saved me? I am literally here looking back at some moments of my life, especially the moments that you have in your mind when you turn 21 or you turn 25. And I had an idealized version of who I would be. And Stargus was like, okay, take it and throw it in the trash. And I've had to rebuild myself since then. It's nice to be able to say with complete transparency that I had a completely different idea of who I would be and different perspectives of what I thought life should be. If someone sat me down and said, hey, yes, you're losing vision, but you're not just gonna lose vision, you're gonna lose your sense of yourself amongst other things, I think I would have found more resolve in that. But I felt like a crazy person for the longest time because I'm like, what is going on? Like, why can't I get it together? I think the biggest thing you can do is give yourself grace. No matter what you're going through, you're not the first person on the planet to go through it. And I don't know if that gives you resolve, but it definitely gives me peace of mind because I'm like, okay, it's not only me. Some things we do create, and cause, but other things are just things that are out of our control. And the only thing we can control is how we respond to them and how we react to them. And when it comes to losing vision, understanding that it's about acceptance and constantly adapting, especially as things get worse, whew, that's half the battle. For me, most of it's the psyche. And the more I realize that every single day it's gonna be a little different as my vision deteriorates, I found a way to be okay. Sometimes it's frustrating, especially when I learn how to do an old thing in a new way and I feel okay and then a couple weeks later I'm like, hold up, I can't do this this way anymore. Do I stop doing it altogether? Or do I try to find a new way to do this? You have to have that conversation with yourself. And it's about like every little thing, which is why the second major key is losing vision is a layer on top of everything. There's a reason why my phrase is life legally blind. It's because it's life while being legally blind. I had a debate a couple months ago with my cousin about dating. She was trying to tell me that no matter if I was blind or sighted, it's still a struggle in these streets. And I was trying to tell her, no, 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 no. I get what you're saying. <laughs> it's a little hard to date these days and find quality men, but imagine this. If I'm to go on a date and I'm sighted, I just got to think about what I'm gonna wear, where we're gonna go, and if I like the guy that I'm talking to. When you're visually impaired, I got to think, is the menu available online and can I review it so that when I'm there in person, I don't have to take out my phone and zoom in and he thinks I'm being rude? Or do I disclose with him because now that's a security thing? Oh gosh, do I have to go there early so he can come to me instead of me walking past him if he's sitting down or going up to the wrong guy? Which has happened one too many times. Or when we're talking and I feel like we are vibing, I can't really see the nonverbal cues. Sometimes they look behind them too because my eyes are not looking in their eyes. 
these are things that people who can see perfectly never have to think about but this is part of the process and this is what i mean about it being a layer on top of everything another example is like getting ready in the day i had fluff on my hair for like a good five hours yesterday and i didn't even realize until my friend took it out of my hair because as many times as i checked myself to make sure i was good before i filmed there was still fluff in my hair Cooking, you gotta use your other senses to make sure you're doing what you think you're doing or take out your phone to make sure you're not gonna eat something that expired because you can't see that expiration date. Every single thing you could possibly think of. Think about how often you use your vision every single day. That's the thing, when you can see well and take it from me at perfect vision until I was 19, I took that ish for granted because had I realized and known how impactful it is, Every day from zero to 19, I would have just thanked God that I was able to see as well as I could see while I could still see. But I'm still grateful and I thank him every single day that I can see what I can see. Trust me, this is a trip. Life Legally Blind is a trip. That's a perfect segue to number three, which is your family and friends will get diagnosed with you. And what I mean by that is like they won't have your eye disease, even though mine is a recessive disease, which means my mom had a gene, my dad had a gene, but they don't express this eye disease. In fact, I got over 40 cousins and not one of them have no bad eyes like me. But when I say your family gets diagnosed with you, what I mean to say is anyone who cares about you is gonna go through this process with you. Whether it's adapting with you, like the way my brother sends me voice notes now instead of texts and friends who don't do that, you're probably not getting a response. And if you wonder why I haven't replied to you, that is why. I can't deal with your essays about your day because you can either call me or send me a voice note. If you don't have time for either or, the next time we link up, fill me in on whatever you got going on. But sending me a long text when I told you for years I can't see is kind of rude to me, personally. It's the friends who, as soon as we sit down somewhere, start reading the menu out because they know it's easier for them with good vision to be able to tell me what's on the menu based on, hey, do you want an app? Nah, let's scratch that. Okay, here are the mains. You prefer chicken or beef? What is it gonna be? I just love the fact that they've just locked in and they know where some of my gaps are and they know where some of my blind spots are and they're willing to bridge the gap. It's my friend who I go on trips with who will be like seven steps as we go down to the metro in Madrid or be careful this cobblestone is not even in Marrakesh. The littlest things that you wouldn't think about is on their mind and that just shows me that they have also an awareness of what it's like to lose vision. When I say it, that they're diagnosed with you, it's because they're going through this journey with you. It's the same when my aunties ask me, how you doing, you're eating? How's work, you have a man yet? You're still living where you live? Why Caribbean people like this? But the fifth question they usually ask is how is your vision? Because they know it's something that's separate, but also something that is very, pertinent in my life. To ask if someone's good is not the same as asking if their vision is good. If you feel me, you feel me. Number four is more the dark side of humanity and you really get to see people's true colors when you lose vision. Because if I only knew who, there's times I used to tell myself, ah, oh, this person won't do me like that because they know I'm visually impaired and there's certain things that come into play when you're starting to lose vision. Ah, they treat me the same way or sometimes worse. And I'm like, people stay scheming out here. It's really bad. It's really, really bad. Take disability out of it. Why are we moving mad in these streets? Why can't we just treat people with respect, trust, honesty, and integrity? I, it just, I'll never get it. I'm not supposed to get it and I will never get it. Whether it's in my personal life with people that I've chosen to have close to me and then decided, no, thank you. Go with God, love you from afar or people who I interact with once in my lifetime. Like if I go to a cafe and it's not busy, because if it was, I would step out of line and take my time with my phone to zoom in. But instead of struggling to see the menu, if I ask them, hey, what are your featured drinks? There's only two pictures up there. They don't want to tell me what it is. Oh, read it, it's right there. I'm legally blind, I cannot see. You know, I just want to know what the flavored matcha is or the latte you're trying to sell me for seven Canadian dollars. I'm so sorry. You're in the service industry. It doesn't take much for you to just read it to me. I'm not even asking you to read it with a smile, just read it to me. Moments like that where I'm like, damn, people are really going through a lot. I always think it's not me, it's whatever is going through their mind at that time that's creating that response. But for all the times I worked in the service industry and I kept my emotions on lock, I'm like, come on, let's get it together, people. Let's get it together. When I meet feisty people, I'm like, you, you gotta be going through something. I've also met people who have been intentionally rude to me or shady when they know that I'm visually impaired. And I'm like, I didn't see that coming. I really didn't. I mean, I couldn't, but it's a trip, okay? <laughs> I wanted to include this one. I know I try to keep things positive, but I don't want you guys to be blindsided out there or being naive like me, I should say, and thinking 
that you wouldn't do something so someone wouldn't do that to you because that's not how the world works and in all honesty sometimes people see that as an opportunity to pull the wool over your eyes so just keep that in mind stay woke keep your head on swivel i want to flip it because i do want to make this fourth one positive i have also met some beautiful spirits and had some beautiful experiences by being able to confide in people or just say i'm visually impaired and then they'll share a narrative with me of what they're going through what they learned from whatever's challenged them in their lives or they've given me advice and we've had like a real moment not like how the weather is but like how life is kind of conversation you can't get that from small talk so being able to be vulnerable and share a little piece of me has unlocked so much with the people I've interacted with. Also, let's talk about the perks for a second because I have never done this before on YouTube, but hey, you can get free tickets to the movies, to the museums, free transportation. If you wanna know more, I can do a separate, maybe YouTube short just to keep it short and sweet. There's a couple perks. I feel like a VIP every time I go to the airport by myself and they're always like, wow, you travel by yourself blind? I'm like, well, I'm gonna meet someone when I get where I'm going, but yeah, from Pearson to where I'm gonna go, I'm doing a solo dolo. The way I get escorted through the airport, I feel like I'm Riri, okay? But for real, like it's an amazing experience running late for a flight that you almost miss and they pop you on a caddy and then you're the first on the plane where they do that at, like only because I'm visually impaired. Mind you, I would still prefer if I could see perfectly and take myself to the seat but it's it's a good thing to have these things in place where someone can guide me also last concert i got floor seats i couldn't even see from there but luckily usher came up to me i could really see him then oh my gosh thank the lord i can see i can actually see him from here on stage i could not see the man so when he came to my seat i'm like oh, but god but god so anyway I felt so self-conscious that day because I went to the concert by myself. So as soon as I got to the front doors where the metal detector is, I asked them, can you lead me to my seat because I'm visually impaired? And they took me all the way from the front doors through three different checkpoints right to my seat. I did not move from that seat until it was time to leave because I was not trying to get lost. It's those types of things that make a huge difference when you're living life legally blind. Another example, and this one's more from a content creation perspective. So you know I vlog, or maybe if you don't, you can check out my vlogs where I share life legally blind in real time. I bring out my camera with me everywhere. And I love sharing moments with you guys, but to be honest, I also do it for myself too. Half the times that I'm doing something, whether it's an activity, an event, or I'm just out, shenanigans, I can't see what's going on. There's so many times I'm laughing by myself like a weirdo, editing because I can finally see something that I couldn't see in real life or I caught something like that actually happened and I caught it on camera. Maybe these aren't moments that you necessarily notice in the vlogs, but when I'm editing, zooming in, and I'm like, I can actually see that thing at the museum, or I could actually see that person on the stage, or I could actually see what was on the menu for that day. For me, vlogging is an ability to live life with sight. The flip and perk of that is because I'm always bringing my camera out wherever I go, people are like, oh, she's a vlogger, and I get better service, I get extra food, free drinks, all of the things. Okay, but seriously, I know I wouldn't vlog if I wasn't visually impaired because honestly, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of work. But the perk of being a vlogger while visually impaired is the camera forces me to come out of my element. It allows me to see things I wouldn't have seen in real time. And hey, free stuff sometimes. Wrapping up with the fifth and final, my personal favorite, if you take anything away today, no matter who you are, where you are, what path you're on on your life, advocacy. And when I first heard of advocacy years ago, I thought it was more like when you do public speeches, when you're facilitating on panels, which I've done before. It's way more than that. It's not me talking to you on YouTube or when I do my podcast. It's advocating for ourselves every single day, even in the smallest of ways. It's being able to say, I need this amongst your family and friends or whoever you're interacting with, or I require this at work or professional settings. And knowing that you're demanding this because you deserve it. When you ask, you are essentially standing up for yourself and you are worthy of enjoying life to the fullest despite whatever vision loss is taken away from you. In fact, I would say advocacy adds value to what your experience is. It almost gives a purpose to what you're going through. When I share my life legally blind with you, the struggles that I go through, the stress and the strife and also the successes, that gives this pain a purpose because I can put it out there in the world in hopes and help somebody else. When I advocate for myself, then I'm able to say like, yes, this thing is a disability. It, visual impairment is real. 
and I need these things to even be able to feel empowered and enabled. I could have never said that 14 years ago. I didn't think I was important enough to require that, but I've come to a place in my life where I realize that each and every one of us has something of value, but we have to start by valuing ourselves in order to share that value with the world. There's no better way than to advocate for yourself. No one's lived the life that you've lived. No one knows the experiences you know, and no one knows you as intimately as you know you. So every time you stand up for yourself, you speak up for yourself, you show your true sense of yourself, you're advocating for yourself. You're saying that what I've gone through it isn't for loss. It has a purpose for me on this path. Go out there, share your story, speak your mind, tell people it sometimes. Okay, maybe not that part. <laughs> do whatever you need to do to get back your confidence, to have the courage to be yourself unapologetically and see how it changes your perspective on yourself. So that's all I got for today. I hope something I said helps you on your authentic way. As I mentioned at the top of this, if you want more videos like this, let me know by commenting below. And in the meantime, you can head over to Patreon. There are hundreds of podcasts, quite a few video podcasts as well. So you're gonna need to catch up, but that's all I got for today. So until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later. So then, dun 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 dun.